All right, and we are back once again, this time for trial number two, set number one. This time, Eternal's Nurse versus Divine Dead Survivor Team. It's going to be quite the uphill battle for this nurse, but it's not outside the realm of possibility. What are your thoughts here, Sina? I think this nurse is going to have to keep up with the same amount of pressure uh, early to mid game if they want to keep up with the uh, spirits uh, results. Um, as we can see though here, uh, with a pretty good 3 uh, gen uh, corrupt at top, so that means um, if they can get themselves down, uh, even towards like the corner here, uh, finding one of the survivors, in fact the beamer survivor, this will extend the chase if they are playing it well. Um, this could be a little rough for the nurse, so if they leave this, find another survivor as they have, it's possible they could pull this through from the uh, early to mid game. Yeah, I'll have to wait and see. Nurse already getting multiple chases here, trying to drop off chase from the flashlight wielder, trying to identify who this survivor might be, and it looks like they have found the Nia and are now in chase towards the edge of the map. And as I say time and time again, that's exactly where you want to be if against a nurse. It really does limit their maneuverability. And we do see firecrackers there at that tile. I'm not sure if that was from the Nia or someone else, but has definitely gotten the nurse's attention. And it looks like it was, in fact, Nia. We do you see the first gen already popping off there in the distance. And looks like Nurse will continue to chase, trying to go for a swing, not able to get the hit, however. And it looks like Neo will extend things even further as they are going to be continuing over into the tile, but getting down out of nowhere. Nurse with a ton of good game sense there, know exactly where the Neo is going to be and able to predict their movement. Yes, these are some insane blinks coming in from the nurse. Nia doing whatever they can, going from one corner to the next, extending that chase, uh, but just not enough to actually uh, reject that hook state. Now, they are able to get that hook uh, with four gens remaining, but it is quite possible that there is progress on another gen here, so we may actually see another one pop very soon. Uh, this nurse is going to have to try to if anything, as they can see here, trying to check the other generators, maybe find a survivor, get an extra tag, just so they can push that extra progress, uh, sorry, uh, pressure, so that they can actually keep up with uh, the uh, spirit's uh, result from last game. Yeah, we're going to have to wait and see. If that being said, Nurse here going to be camping out the Nia. Only 30 seconds left, but it's leaving these survivors to be on the gens. So not sure if it is the right move because at the end of the day, the moment that these survivors are able to complete a uh, fourth generator, that there will be victory. We do see the trade here for the Nia. Ada and the Nancy taking a hit for it, but looks like Nurse will opt to go for the tunnel out. Keep in mind, they did not progress to second stage, so they are going to be in a little bit of trouble here yes yes in fact that was a very good uh unhook from the survivors ends here now are we going to see ourselves a ds player no, no we are not yeah no decisive Sorry. strike <laughs> so this is going to end up being their second hook here drag them back over to the middle of this map we do see a little bit of a forge end here maybe why the nurse is fo so focused in on this yes in fact this is a crucial hook for the nurse uh with Hopefully, we will see uh, if they have any sort of regression they can like, work off of. But finding the Nancy, able to get the down, this is actually going to be great pressure for them as they go ahead and chase their tunnel out. If they can get this tunnel out early enough before the next gen pops, or even right as the next gen pops, it is possible uh, they could turn this around. Uh, and use this pressure with the extra injure and down from the Nancy with two, maybe even three gens left. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's going to be an interesting end game here. Nurse going for the blank. Second, another gen going off. That is going to be the third gen now. Only two gens remaining. I mean that if any other gen is completed, Divine Dead will walk away victorious in set number one. We see it happen right in the nurse's face. These survivors playing absolutely out of their mind. They knew the win condition, knew exactly what they needed, and they were able to get there. Divine Dead walking away with the set one victory here. Yes. 
the nurse checking the wrong gen <laughs> just happens to be if that 50 50 while camping the hook if they had checked the other generator they probably would have noticed that there was some progress on it but that's just the name of the game when you're at this high kind of level uh now getting the hook with the nancy here i think they're just going to try to play this out uh they do know uh that they certainly have lost this set so they'll be going on to the next of course uh, if anything uh, let's see what the nurse has in store here to uh, present to us let's see if yeah yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, these points still matter. In the instance of a true tie at the very end of the match, there is a very real possibility that these points will be the deciding factors of it all to who goes to finals and who goes to the bronze match instead. We see two sets of scratch marks here. I believe that there is the ace. Ada further back over towards the shack. And Ace maybe trying to get in for one of these generators as we do see the Ada going for the unhook. I'm going to imagine Ada is the Delhi player here as they have been the only survivor to unhook this entire time. Getting the hit on the BT effect, downing the Nancy after four sets of blinks. Very good on the nurse. Uh, DS? No DS. So we know that DS still is in play. We also know that Delhi is still in play. Uh, and as we can see here, Agitation co uh, coming in clutch, trying to get this middle hook, which is a very crucial hook, as we can already see from this nurse. Uh, seeing the Ada run by, kicking. Oh, and Blast Mine. I love a little Blast Mine play. This is very, very interesting. Uh, and Pop coming into play as well, but so late into the game. I wonder if it's even going to make any difference. Yeah, that's the question, right? I mean, the nurse has a good 3-gen here. I imagine they can definitely force the 4k. The question is whether or not these survivors are sneaking around, getting these gens progress just bit by bit. Nancy with a little bit of time left on their hook, about 30 seconds, meaning that Ada or Ace is going to have to come in soon. Yes, and as we can see, they've already got that reset. Are they going to either come in for the double, or is just one of them going to come in for the save here? Uh, or are they just going to let them unhook, try to get as much progress as they can on these generators? Um, I'm willing to bet they're just going to wait for that one last possible moment uh, to get that unhook. And here we go. That's what we see. Uh, committing to the aid and not going for Nancy either. Uh, try to get their fresh stage, which is worth a lot more points. And that's uh, going to be a hook. Oh, for the Ada? Or are they waiting out for a pounce stun? I see. Yeah, I think the nurse heard something. I thought I heard something as well for maybe a survivor setting up for a pallet stun there. Do you keep in mind, as you mentioned earlier, Ada very likely the Deli user here. I imagine we'll see them jump off the hook here in just a few moments. But between Pop Goes the Weasel and Call of Brian, things are looking quite grim here for the survivors. So it's unlikely they're going to be able to complete this fifth gen. It's unfortunate that the nurse wasn't able to get that uh, pressure from their pop in uh, Call of Brian a little earlier in the game. It's possible that it could have maybe tr turned the tides here. Uh, because as we can see, uh, it's really hurting the survivors on their gen progress uh, currently. Um, now, it seems like the nurse knows with their game sense, it's probably they're probably doing a reset at this very moment. Um, or someone is coming in to get save. Oh, I oh. see, I see. Okay, so that's really interesting. Here I am thinking that Ada was the Delhi user this entire time, but that demonstrates something completely different. That demonstrates to me that it's very possible this nurse got very lucky in the first chase of the match where Nia was in fact the Delhi user and thus was able to get Delhi out of the game and potentially Unbreakable 2 uh, out very early, meaning that these survivors are left with that fewer number of second chance perks. Uh, though it could be possible, uh, the ace ha hasn't been hooked, right? Ace hasn't been hooked, but for been... Ada to go for the last two hooks and not ace, it would be, uh, really surprising, especially on the first unhook. We saw both Nancy and the Ada instead, with Ada getting the unhook, Nancy taking the body block for them. So it'd be really surprising to me for that not to be the case. So, I love that. In fact, uh... The the fact that they were able to get the Delhi early game two and the survivors were able to pull in this much pressure, uh, even with it, uh, and as we can see, the Ace got saved by the Nancy, no broken effect. So definitely, the Neo was the Delhi. Uh, I had thought in my mind because uh, it's very common to see a Delhi player with the flashlight. So I thought, what if maybe, just maybe, 
the ace was unable to get their deli through the game got it towards the end game we might see a play but here we are uh ada going on the hook here uh for their final hook it seems uh we're gonna sorry second last hook i stand corrected <laughs> Yep, Ada's still hanging on for dear life, and keep in mind, both Nancy and Ada now one step away from being sent back to campfire via the Entity. We do see the unhook on the Ada from the Ace, who has yet to be hooked, so I imagine we'll be testing out this theory soon, whether or not the Ace is the Deli user. But before we do that, Nurse want to take a quick kick of the gen to regress it with Colibrine. We do see scratch marks back there on this gen as well. I imagine it is the healthy Nancy. And sure enough, there they are. And looks like we will be continuing to chase. Nancy trying to make a little bit of distance. Does throw the pallet, but unable to avoid the blink strike. And looks like the Nurse will be going back and will get the ace. And looks like unsatisfied of just that. They'll go for the Ada as well. Going for a swing and a miss, however. And looks like the Nurse will actually go for the Ace here, knowing that they are worth a total of three points for their initial hook. Yes. Uh, apologies there. I uh, was having issues with uh, some uh, hardware. Uh, <laughs> but I am back and ready to go. Uh, but the Ace here getting their second stage, it means that all survivors now are at death hook. Uh, if anything, it's just getting uh, one those last points from each survivor, securing the 4K, seeing Nancy's scratch marks. It looks like the game is going to end here. Yeah, it looks like this will be wrapping up here shortly. And yeah, completely forgetting that Ace was in fact hooked for a first time earlier. Uh, but with that being said, yeah, that there will be the 4K here as we do see Nancy going up on hook. I doubt there is an unbreakable from the Ada. Otherwise, they probably would have already used it. Ace probably would have been sent back to the campfire just a little bit earlier. But uh, Ada trying to crawl towards where hooks have already been used. But with agitation here, there is no way this nurse will not get to the hook in time. And that there will be the 4K at one gen remaining. Unfortunately for the nurse, just not enough as Divine Dead was able to claim their win condition and will take set number one. Very, very fun game to watch indeed, Guilt. I uh, honestly think if the nurse have gotten just a little bit of uh, value uh, from their uh, gen regression perks, it's possible they could have secured a tie, even possible, possibly a win, but uh, very, very well played from all fronts. I'm excited to see this next, uh, these next two games. Yeah, absolutely. We are going to be going to set number two now. This time we're going to be seeing Eternal's Blight versus Divine Dead Survivor Team. And we are going to be uh, sending ourselves over to the Suffocation Pit. So with that being said, before we do go on a quick break here, we do want to remind everyone here today that we are partnered with Pugdom. Pugdom is a Dead by Daylight competitive community very similar to ours. In fact, they're hosting the entirety of Group B over on their channel. So they'll make sure to stop on by, say hi, and drop a follow too. And join the Discord as well while you're at it. That way you could potentially participate in Group B of Champs and Fog Season 7. With that being said, we'll be back in just a bit.
All right, and we are back once again, this time for trial number two, set number one, this time Eternal's Nurse versus Divine Dead Survivor Team. It's going to be quite the uphill battle for this nurse, but it's not outside the realm of possibility. What are your thoughts here, Sina? I think this nurse is going to have to keep up with the same amount of pressure uh, early to mid game if they want to keep up with the uh, spirits uh, result. Um, as we can see though here, uh, with a pretty good 3 uh, gen uh, corrupt at top, so that means um, if they can get themselves down, uh, even towards like the corner here, uh, finding one of the survivors, in fact the beamer survivor this will extend the chase if they are playing it well um this could be a little rough for the nurse so if they leave this find another survivor as they have it's possible they could pull this through And we are back for set number two, trial number three, Eternal's Blight versus Divine Dead Survivor Team. That being said, this is a fresh set, and it is now ripe for the picking for Eternal to claim victory, forcing a set number three. But we'll have to wait and see as we are going to be going to the Suffocation Pit. And uh, with that being said, without further ado, we're jumping right on in. Yes, I'm quite excited for some more Blight gameplay. Uh, as you probably have already noticed, I'm super hyped and super excited. Uh, now, this is quite interesting. A Corrupt at the top side instantly rushing over this way, hoping to find a survivor out of position hiding, uh, which is definitely the best play for the survivors here. Sneaking, trying to pass through mid uh, to try to get to the other side and uh, get past the Blight, finding the Ada at one of the main pallets here on top side let's see how this fares for the ada and chase uh what do you what what is this looking at to you uh Gil? i mean so far so good but ada trying to go for the vacuum tech unable to make it happen as they will take a hit however looks like they will be going to the main blight feeling though that they've wasted too much time will drop the chase instead now going back for the gens that are active over on shack side and I kind of like this play for a lot of reasons. They know that main's blocked by Corrupt Intervention. And with Corrupt still having about another minute or so on the clock, this allows them to harass these active generators without um, getting rid of Corrupt first. Exactly, exactly. This is a very smart play from the Blight to pressure these. Uh, in fact, for uh, keeping the Ada on top side away from uh, uncorrupted gens is actually ah! the play. But getting two tags here uh, on Ada and the Nia, um, I'm assuming Ada is, has already uh, transitioned to bot side to start working gens. Nia getting that pallet stun just enough to get to top side and waste enough time here. Uh, honestly, this is this is all well played from both sides. Very good start. And a really strong um, uh, gameplay from both sides, to say the least. And I will say, Blight being really patient there, as I'm pretty sure the Nia did utilize uh, Dead Heart there, trying to bait the Blight, but Blight at that second rush just to confirm that wasn't going to happen. And a really good hit there and fine on the Nancy, who is rushing to the hook. Without those uh, rush tokens, looks like Nancy will get the unhook, potentially securing their deliverance. However, Nia getting blocked off here. Blight trying to force a grab, potentially, but they're just going to wait it out and see if they can get to here on time. And honestly, I don't know if that's considered a safe rescue for the Nancy. It's so tight. I wasn't counting. Uh, if anything, it's... 
I think you are correct. Uh, the the down was just so quick right after the uh, BT effect. I'm assuming, if anything, this Nancy did not secure uh, the uh, safe unhook, and if they did have Delhi, they did not get it. Um, they are with the medkit, and that is a common play for these survivors to have uh set up if that is the deli uh with medkit so um if the nancy is is uh wanting to actually get value out of their perk uh they're gonna have to go for the save here uh, and it's gonna be very very risky yeah i'll have to wait and see both ada and the nancy here trying to assist the nia however they have a really good setup here on this hook because this rock kind of making it very difficult for these survivors to uh actually get the unhook here they do get the hit on the nancy nancy actually no the hit was on the ada i'm not sure how it happened but the hit actually landed on the ada instead and once again blight gonna go for the taunt trying to get in front of the nia here but unable to make it happen as they will instead take the bt hit and stun if Nancy does have deliverance, they'll definitely get it now, as this should result in a safe hook rescue. And pushing themselves all the way to where the completed gens were, uh, very good on the Nia. Uh, it seems like the Blight is going to be forced to, to, for, uh, to get, to get, oh my gosh, the hook in the middle, uh, giving them just enough time to get some resets here. Uh, either the Ada here is pressuring another generator, either uh, within uh, the mains radius, going for the blast mine. I always love to see those guild. Oh my gosh! I mean, blast mine makes a lot of sense. It delays the the killer by a significant amount of time. And we see here, even with brutal strength, they were not able to get the kick in time for them to then rush over to this generator and interrupt the survivors. We now have kind of a really unique setup here, where the blight now has a two-one-one split. So basically, no three gens. Yes, the Blight can maneuver around the map with impunity, being as fast as they are. However, I think these spires could potentially get the fifth generator. Yes, and in fact, uh, in, uh, it seems like the Ada was on a generator. Middle gen, in fact, uh, of, it was away uh, from the gen that had popped towards main side. Uh, so if they are able to get this down, uh, this is going to be very good for the Blight, but missing that last rush, that was an incredibly crucial rush for the Blight. If they are able to, sorry, the Ada is able to extend the chase just a little bit longer, it is quite possible these survivors are going to pop a generator. Yeah, absolutely. And we did see Nancy there kind of taking over that gen that Ada was working on. Ace over here trying to complete the gen on the hill. Our uh, recall Brian will be applied, regressing it by 2.5%, followed by a 200% regression thereafter. And Ace will get tagged by the Blight here. All three survivors now injured, and Ace still in chase. Uh, and now with all three survivors injured, uh, this can actually spell... Uh disaster uh for the survivors uh though they do have quite the gen spread to just sit on those generators and not have to worry too too much about resets if they're able to find that crucial moment where they can possibly fit those in uh without getting caught and the uh without the blight noticing then it is quite possible they could uh use that to their advantage and apply intense amounts of pressure but now that they know where all three survivors are as we have witnessed uh, it is quite possible uh, that the uh, survivors here are just going to sit on these generators, pump them out as much as possible, get one more done, uh, which would actually be very good result for them uh, versus the Blight. Yeah, I would tend to agree, and Blight rushing back, trying to really just catch them out of position. And uh, these fires just making some really risky plays here. And let's see if it pays off as play. Will go for rush. Will instead of going to the gen, will bounce. Just trying to get these gens regress as much as possible through Colibrine. And uh, doing a good job of it. We saw these gens on the, on the edge of completion. But at this point in time, it looks like they will be regressed down to three cylinders or below. You see the noise notification there. Both the Ada and the Nancy... And looks like Blight will drop chase with the ace, trying to get the the slide there on the wall, but just not able to make it happen. Yeah, the ace going ahead and throwing that pallet, it is possible that they try to delay the Blight just a little bit longer to give them enough time to double on this middle generator. This Blight, if anything, has the uh, is in the position 
uh, to just sit here and bounce between both gens, especially with all survivors injured. Uh, either that one of these gens are going to pop or th these survivors are going to slip up and the blaze going to capitalize on that. Uh, we'll have to see. This is looking very intense and I love this gameplay. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And I do want to point out here, surprised that they haven't sent the Nancy to go to the far gen and try and get that one going all the while. I mean, the blaze wasted a lot of time here. And Realistically speaking, not wasted. These gens have been regressing bit by bit by bit. And I think the Blight kind of realizing that the game plan may have changed here as the Nancy now reset. Ada going down, though, just not in the right positioning. Uh, but Blight going to not going to pick up pick them up right away. Instead, going to check the gen the Ace was on. And this here will be a fresh hook on the Ada, granting the Blight an additional three points. Yes, this is actually an amazing position for the Blight. They now are just like on the very bit one up uh, against the survivors here. Uh, getting the heal on the Nancy actually is very good. Uh, so it is quite possible uh, that the survivors could uh, use this, utilize this moment uh, to give Ascent just enough time to complete a generator top side. Uh, and either the Blight has to commit to the Ace uh, or they just can't build this hook, and as we can see, uh, committing over to this generator with the most progress on the ace, uh, allowing the Nancy to get the save. Yeah, absolutely. The Blight being patient there with the rushes will get the down on the ace. Looks like they're thinking about going for the pickup, but first want to check on the gen to ensure that it is regressing. But Nancy coming in to stop the regression and forcing the Blight to uh, instead go for a chase. And we do see Nancy now injured and Blight once again having to take the time to kick the gens. I mean, the survivors, though they are losing hook states now, are really just pressuring this Blight time and time again with these generators. And uh, looks like we will probably see Ace picked up off the ground here in just a few moments. Yeah, it seems as though uh, the Blight has decided instead of going for the hook on the Ace, they, do, they want to uh, pressure the generators. A very well played from them too. Uh, actually, I was about to say if they weren't getting the save already, they had to have get it, uh, gotten it soon because otherwise this play definitely after kicking these gems would have went for the pickup. But they did get it right at that moment. Very well played from the survivors. Now we're back in the position of a three, <laughs> a three v one. All survivors injured. Both of these generators with tons of progress already. We're back to square one guilt. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much, but Blight now with one additional hook on these survivors. So we're progressing the game bit by bit, but depends on uh, who has the most patience uh, who will uh, end up victorious. And looks like they are trying to get that hill gen completed now. So trying to transfer in Ada uh, from that middle gen now over to that hill gen. And we see the Nancy and the, the Ace now kind of trying to go back and forth, but Blight having to make a decision at some point to commit to a chase or determine that they found a survivor out of position. But looks like another Colorbrine, another 2.5% re regression on that gen. We do see what looked to be a Nancy here and an Ace trying to do a reset, I think, and an Ada all the way back at Shaq. Yeah, uh, the survivors, Nancy and Ace, uh, are in the position to do those resets at behind main uh, because Ada, with all this progress on the middle generator, they have all the time in the world to work on this gen uh, and for those two to actually finish the reset. But now that Ada has gathered the Blight's attention, I'm willing to bet the Blight is just going to give up on that hill generator, try to just force a hook here, uh, knowing full well chances are they're going to lose this trade. Uh, but if they are able to force this hook, but they got the reset instead. Yep. Very interesting play from the survivors. Yeah, uh, the, the Blight realizing that the survivors were primed and ready for a reset took the gamble and it did pay off. The Gen on Hill still regressing. Ada now on a hook. This is exactly where the Blight wants to be and now has really put these survivors into an awkward position to say the least. Yes, and these survivors are going to have to utilize these, these resets very well if they want to come on top. Um, I honestly think that was a very, it, it's, it feels like it's a safer play, but with how many resources have been just taken out of the game in this area, 
it feels as if, like, this is just too much of a gamble for the survivor. Yeah, absolutely, but Ace coming in for the unhook on the Ada, and once again, all three survivors injured, but a lot less progression on these generators. I imagine Blight will probably commit to the chase here on one of them, and looks like Nancy back in main will be their target. Yes, uh, rushing back towards the middle, uh, trying to prevent any sort of uh, progress. Maybe looking for a reset bot side? Yeah, I imagine Blake kind of sussing out that the survivors are back here somewhere, but unable to locate exactly where. And once again, really surprised that the survivors haven't transitioned to that gen in the far back. I wonder if that is a strategic play or something else, but either ways, it really comes down to whether or not they can get this last generator completed. I don't think they get, can get five. I think they can get maybe four if they play their cards right, but this play has just been doing a fantastic job crushing these gens time and time again. Yes, yes. I feel like the window to complete that generator at Hill had already passed earlier when the, when the uh, Blight went for the pickup. Uh, and again, as I said, if they really need to utilize uh, that pressure from the reset if they want uh, it to be valuable, but um, it seems as though the Blight here is punishing that macro game play, the Ada pressuring that gen near Shaq, as you stated, uh, being surprised that they weren't working on it earlier, uh, but working on it now is, I don't think it was worth it. Yeah, I, I would tend to agree. I think as they were going back and forth between the two gens earlier, where there's a whole lot more progression to keep the Blight's attention, I think that made a lot more sense. But now if Ada being sent back to the campfire via the entity, it's now a 2v1 scenario. I do not think there is any way for these survivors to escape via the X gates at this point. If these survivors are able to get as much pressure as they can on two separate generators uh, furthest from one another and they're able to separate, it is possible that they could do a dual play here. But with Ace and Chase, oh, now they're leaving the Ace, checking back on one of the gens, more than likely the far one, which is actually a very smart play if the Nancy is working on them, which we do see those scratch marks. So as I stated, it's possible that these duo survivors could pop another generator. Yeah, I mean, if they play it right or have a long enough chase and the Blight kind of gets a bit too much tunnel vision, it definitely would work. However, Blight kicking the gen, not able to find where that survivor may have gone. We do see the Call of Brian noise notification. Blight having to make the choice of whether or not they go back for the gen with the noise note or that they keep their eye on that. But two back-to-back -back noise notifications, that there is the ace leaving the Nancy on the bottom gen. Ace now needs to hold the Blight in chase for as long as possible to give the Nancy a chance, but looks like Ace will be going down here. Baiting out the dead heart, very well played. If they had were able to pull that off, I think the Nancy would have been able to actually pop this gen, but now Nancy's going to need some insane uh, movement, uh, some insane positioning in order to actually give the ace anything. Uh, did we see un uh, we d you said that Unbreakable is still in play, correct? I, I believe Unbreakable is still in play, at least I have not noticed it used thus far but there will be the down on the Nancy. Surprised that the Blight is not going to go for the pickup here because they do potentially risk a, uh, a hatch escape uh, if in instance things fall into place but I do believe Ace has yet to be hooked here so, you know, there's definitely going to be 60 seconds plus the additional uh, time it takes to miss your skill checks. So I think it's unlikely, but you never know. Stranger things have happened. Yes, in fact, we have seen the ace uh, slugged earlier. And if they did have Unbreakable, uh, they didn't pop it there. And for them crawling, I'm willing to bet that they do not have it. Uh, it is quite possible that Nancy has Unbreakable uh, in this situation. If they do, I'm curious if they can make a play with it. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Blight trying to look for the Nancy and so far unable to find them. Even my Nancy has not been hooked at all. So an instance of a bleed out, that would be a loss of three points here for the Blight. But uh, so far, no sign of them. Blight finding them last moment but looks like they might be waiting to pick up the Nancy until Ace hits second stage. Just want to keep an eye on them. Whether that be in case of an Unbreakable, whether that be in case of Deliverance from the Ace, we'll have to wait and see. And uh, Blight just kind of setting up uh, 
here, you know, taking a look at the shack, taking a, a close eye. Gonna take a quick kick of the Gen 2, I imagine, and doing some laps around the rock. Seems like they're doing some camera shenanigans at the rock here. Uh, Blight, you're not supposed to be doing that. Come on. What do you mean? You know, Blight just wanted to You're not to supposed like... to stick your head in the rock. Yeah, Blight just wants to feel like the nurse for a change. You know, get uh, <laughs> get the ability to phase through things and uh, able to do that then. But Ace now's progressed to second stage. No chance of a deliverance. And uh, at this point, the Blight very much just playing with their food. Yes. Uh, in fact, actually, because the Nancy... Uh, was so keen on getting those saves earlier. I am willing to bet that they do have Delhi still in play. So it is quite possible they're just going to wait for the ace to die on hook so that when they do pick up the Nancy, uh, they end up uh, canceling out uh, their Delhi uh, from the instant death from the entity. Uh, yeah. Though, um, if the Nancy has Unbreakable here and they pop it just barely uh, to get themselves a, uh, a hatch play, I wonder if um they'll try that yeah mm -hmm. but nancy getting picked up last moment will be hooked and now there is no way of escape as that there will be delhi canceled out even with hatch right there underneath their nose and so that there will be the 4k at three gens completed for eternal yes three gens completed 4k I am quite excited to see what is up next in this next Blight game. This was a very, very intense game throughout. I loved the 3, 3v1 gameplay. Uh, there's a meme that I've actually seen uh, with... When it comes to Nightlight in the 3v1, they just... Sorry, not Nightlight. My gosh, uh, Eternal uh, with the 3v1. They just play so well in those moments, and we have that demonstrated right here and i just love it so much yeah absolutely and though i know you're excited for potentially more blight gameplay i hate to disappoint but instead we are going to be seeing the vami mommy herself from the vine dead against Ooh. eternal survivor team so it's going to be interesting to see can a plague outplay the blight only time will tell but we're going to get this lobby set up in just one moment. Though, before we do, we do remind everyone here today that you, yes, you, the viewers, are our sponsors. And on top of which, we do want to shout out that we are getting closer and closer to hitting our requirements for a partnership over on YouTube. So if you guys haven't already, please make sure to drop on by and drop a subscribe, as that is right now the only requirement that we are pretty far away from. With that being said, we are going to be back in just a little bit. We'll see you soon.
All right, and we are back for set number two, trial number four, where Divine Dead is going to be pine the plague against Eternal's survivor team. And they are going to need to get a 4K at three generators for a tie, which will still force a set number three, or a 4K at two generators completed in order to claim victory. So quite the uphill battle to say the least, but definitely not outside the realm possibility. With that being said, we are jumping right on in and we are spotting over by what looks to be the main side. Yes, and as we can also see here, uh, one pull uh, so we do know that an apple is not in play, but said pool is where their open and possibly active generators will be in the early game. So it is possible they could get a lot of value out of them. Puking on the generators as a plague should, uh, finding Nania on the far end of the map, but having to check this side to and hopefully find a survivor out of position stealthing before they can make it to mid. Um... Honestly, uh, what do you think in this match is going to look like here, Gilt? I mean, I think it's going to be really slow and drawn out, trying to make the most usage out of their corruption. However, they did see a survivor here, but unable to find them now. Going for another vomit, this time on a already corrupted gen. Survivors yet to get infected, telling us that they may have not crossed over towards main just yet. Probably just trying to wait out the corrupted invention, but it seems that there is a survivor here over by the shack. Play, getting some vomit and there is the ace now in chase and everything around here is infected so ace is bound to get infected shortly here as they will take a swing and get the hit yes so they got the swing and the hit here instead of puking on the survivor that's a very interesting play uh going to commit to the chase it's taking them right into the middle and is that i see a flashbang or a firecracker in their hands i believe that is a firecracker though drop and chase now as we do see the nia here on the gen throwing down the pallet as well to extend the chase a little bit do want to note the existence of the natophobia here which the survivors are keenly aware of so makes sense why they wanted to get that early hit to slow down these gens back here by just a little bit and they now know where all four survivors are as nia is now infected claudette was on this gen here and uh, we also saw, I believe, the Meg as well. So Plague really just trying to slow this game down as much as possible. We do see what looks to be the Claudette here as well. Nia now infected two stacks of the Natophobia, meaning that things are slowed down by about 4%. Yes, though that 4% isn't going to do too, too much. Wait. Yes, the 4%, my bad, for uh, not going to do too, too much for the plague here, not unless they're able to get all survivors injured. Now, as we can see, though, we have a play with your food stack, a very, very interesting uh, choice. Uh, in fact, one of my favorites on plague. Yeah, I've been seeing more and more play for food on the plague with varied results. Sometimes it gets a lot of value, sometimes not so much. We'll have to wait and see here if the Vine Dead's Plague is going to be able to make it work. That being said, they are out on the prowl. Looks like it is with the Nia trying to mind game here with the play for food stack, trying to get a little bit of distance, just unable to make it work as we now see the ace as well. Three survivors currently injured, 6% slowdown from Fanatophobia and Plague in a little bit mind game there as that gen is firing off as we speak. This Plague is trying to catch a survivor out of position, which is very interesting. But if they keep trying to bounce back and forth between the survivors, it is quite possible that multiple gens are going to pop. Now, if these survivors are working on crucial gens that are really close to one another, uh, which it seems to be, there's a very wide three gen uh, for this plague, so it's going to be very rough. Um, it, I think this is good, very risky of them uh, to want to try and get pressure just by bouncing and catching them out of uh, position here. Yeah, I tend to agree. At the same time, Ace going to be making a little bit of effort here. Will not be dropping up out right away. The only resource really left here. Ace not caught off guard by the main game. And looks like they are holding their position very well. But Plague just unable to get it down. 
Keep in mind, the win condition here is a 4k at two gens completed, so they're going to have to make some choices very quickly, lest we see two, if not three, gens completed as the first gen does pop off. Second gen following suit. The 4k needs to happen here and now. Yes, it, I agree. Uh, I feel like this was too, too risky on the uh, Plague side here, but if, if it is possible, uh, they could turn this down a round and uh turn this into a 4k2 oh wow now that we're down to the wire the they've definitely secured themselves a tie here in this situation the best the play can do is try to hold this uh uh this condition but with only one hook in the game that's going to be very rough for this flag. Yeah, not to mention a tie nonetheless is not a win and for that reason we will be moving to set number three no matter the results of this match. But as we said before and we'll remind again, the points for these sets does matter in the instance of a true tie breaker. So the plague still wanting to try and reduce the number of points that these survivors get as much as possible while also getting as many points themselves. So we'll have to wait and see as they now have found the Claudette getting another stack of flavor food going and looks like they will be going for the tunnel out here on the ace though mia now with a bit of a loop with friends scenario here and mia trying to hold off there but plague will be patient enough getting the hit there with the assistance of player food and plague not satisfied with just that will also go for the ace here as well and looks like trying to once again do a little bit of mind gaming but will not be able to make it work as ace will hold w instead moving into the column tile yes uh chasing them right into this four lane uh but if i was about to say if they're unable to get this uh down early enough it is going to be incredibly tough for this plague to come around now seeing the call of brian skill check they are going to hook this survivor on that generator but it here it goes it pops and that has secured a win yep unfortunately for the plague just not able to get there in time even with the notification from call of brine and looks like they are going to be trying to go around and potentially try and get this unhook i don't think i see blood on the ground so i do believe that this is the meg in fact and sure enough it is they're going to try and go for the one for one trade here but uh Plague hot on their heels with flavor food, and they will get it as Plague does take an aggressive hit. But now Ace is primed and ready for the tunnel out. And now that they've lost both of their play with your food stacks, uh, and going in for their power, very interesting play here. Um, we'll have to see if they do have the amulet uh, to extend the amount of time that it lasts, uh, then we will know if. Uh, they'll be able to actually turn this around and get themselves a 4k in the end game. Uh, but we do know all four perks. There is no end game perk. So there's very little assistance here for them and play with your food with very little stacks. These are going to still be some pretty long chases if the survivors are able to wait out their power. And looks like the plague opting to go for the slug out will attempt to go to the exit gates and pressure them though so far no sign of uh, survivors there and if they do leave the slugged out survivor here on shack side they do risk a potential hatch escape so we'll have to wait and see if this works out in their favor but i imagine these survivors are already on the exit gate open up as we speak probably one two three out and sure enough there is and potentially a four man out now with the nia i imagine and crawling closer and closer to the hatch at shack yes and it seems they did get that four out very very unfortunate game for the uh plague uh these survivors were doing very well uh punishing this, the uh plague for bouncing between the survivors very risky but if it had pulled off if they were able to pull it off i should say uh, it would have been a very, very rough situation for the survivors. Um, but again, we're going on to the next set of games. I'm quite excited. I love me some top tier gameplay. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited as well. And we are going to be going to Wrecker's Yard for set number three, trial number five, where Divine Dead will be bringing the artist against Eternal Spirit. So we'll see here who will walk away victorious. No matter what, we will find the result here in this third and final set. With that being said, before we do go and get this lobby set up, 
we do remind everyone here today that you, yes, you the viewers, are our sponsors. So that as they watch all the bits they tip, all the subs they buy, and of course all the rogue energy buy using the code COTF goes to supporting Chips and Fog in the prize pool for Group A and Group B. With that being said, we'll be back in just a little bit. And we are back for set number two, trial number four, where Divine Dead is going to be playing the plague against Eternal's survivor team. And they are going to need to get a 4K at three generators for a tie, which will still force a set number three, or a 4K at two generators completed in order to claim victory. So quite the uphill battle to say the least, but definitely not outside the realm of possibility. With that being said, we are jumping right on in and we are spawning over by what looks to be the main side. Yes, and as we can also see here, uh, one pull uh, so we do know that an apple is not in play, but said pool is where their open and possibly active generators will be in the early game. So it is possible they could get a lot of value out of them. Puking on the generators as a plague should, uh, finding the Nia on the far end of the map, but having to check this side to and hopefully find a survivor out of position stealthing before they can make it to mid. Um... Honestly, uh, what do you think in this match is going to look like here, Gilt? I mean, I think it's going to be really slow and drawn out, trying to make the most usage out of their corruption. However, they did see a survivor here, but unable to find them now. Going for another vomit, this time on a already corrupted gen. Survivors yet to get infected, telling us that they may have not crossed over towards main just yet. 
probably just trying to wait out the corrupt invention but it seems that there is a survivor here over by the shack play getting some vomit and there is the ace now in chase and everything around here is infected so ace is bound to get infected shortly here as they will take a swing and get the hit yes so they got the swing and the hit here instead of puking on the survivor that's a very interesting play uh going to commit to the chase it's taking the and we are back once again this time for set three trial number five divine dead versus eternal and we are gonna be jumping right on in this time on the wreckers yard where this is for all the marbles and it's going to come down to this set. If an instance, Divine Dead or Eternal walk away victorious in set number three, they will be going to the finals. Otherwise, they'll be going to the bronze match where they will be going against PTR. That being said, we're jumping right on in. Yes, yes, we are seeing some artist gameplay right on Wrecker's Yard. I am quite excited i love i honestly all of these killers i'm excited for all of them um i love me some artist gameplay uh now with a three gen corrupt on the right and top side uh as of t uh as i would call um that's actually pretty good for this artist all you have to really cover now is about 30 40 percent of the map um and that's actually really good with her uh birds coming into play and pressuring the generators um how do you feel about this uh about artist on this map honestly it's a it's a potentially really good choice i mean at the end of the day artist has a lot going for them in general um so it's really going to come down to the abilities of the player not necessarily the the killer themselves so it's going to be really interesting to see how they do manage these tiles and if they're able to get full value as we do see these survivors just going for the whole w gameplay um i mean it's really great for killers like huntress for example but the biggest thing about artists is you want to actually restrict survivor line of sight more so than what you want to give yourself and so I think that's where this is going to be very interesting. Uh, to where artist really wants to keep that survivor guessing through and through. But uh, in this case, we do see Nia going up to the hill. Potentially a bounce landing in play. Will get a little bit of distance for it as well. As we do see Ada coming in for a body block. But it might be in a flight path. And it is that there is the hit on the Ada. Yes. And though uh, Ada is in a great position uh holding up on deep three here trying to uh keep the artist busy on this side of the map while their teammates work on those generators uh now that corrupt is out that's one 20 seconds in uh for their first down two generators popping the knee is still injured uh this is a very uh honestly this is looking good for the survivors yeah, it definitely is. Right now in a really strong position, so we'll have to wait and see if not taking the S tier here plays out in Divine Dead's favor. But at least for this first hook here, things are looking a little bit grim for the artists as we do see a missed skill check there. Potentially seeing that Flight of Crows trying to get off in time, but... Uh... Looks like artists just going to be kind of hanging around, harassing gens from afar, and uh, hoping to slow things down long enough to potentially progress Ada to second stage. Yes, try to get them to second stage, secure that uh, hook. Uh, 
while they accost these survivors who are more than likely working on these generators. Oh, but the ace coming in, that was a very clutch save. Incredible timing. Um, but unfortunately, the Ada did not go to second. Uh, so now the artist is back to, if anything, uh, square one having to chase their tunnel out while the Ada goes into position where gens were completed. Do they have DS though? That is the question. I also do want to point out that if the ace does in fact have deliverance, that is very likely not a safe unhook. So very possible that the artist was able to get them down in time to avoid a potential deliverance though. Actually, as I'm thinking about it, as artists kind of pseudo S tier, they're very high A in the best of hands. Um, I'm not sure if Deliverance is even available against artists for these survivors. So with that being said, there's uh, actually a possibility that uh, artists kind of has free reign here. And uh, these survivors just really having to focus in on these gens. Definitely getting another Blast Mine play. I love those every time. <laughs> Wasting just enough time though for the survivors to come in and get that save. I love those that sort of coordination with Blast Mine. It's such a great perk for that. Uh, having to now push in to the Ada. Now, I feel like the Ada needs to get away from these active generators uh, just to give their team enough time to get a little bit more pressure as the Ada is doing, uh, going towards middle to bottom right side of the map, preventing the down. That was actually very well uh, played on the Ada on very good movement. Um, honestly, uh, this is looking really, really good for the survivors and a little tough for our artist here. Yeah, absolutely, especially as they can't get that pickup underneath that pallet. Artists realizing there is someone nearby for the pallet stun. However, Ace getting caught out in the middle of nowhere where they will end up going down there in the corner. Mia very much going to be picking up the Ada there, and we do see just that. Ever Ada now swarmed from the Dire Crows. Artist setting up for the potential down and injure of the Nia. And there the Dire Crows are, but just narrowly missing the Ada there. Yeah, barely missing that Ada. Unfortunately, trying to go for the prediction that it's possible they could have went for a W. That way the survivors could have actually gone for the pickup on the ace, but very well played on the survivors, still pushing through onto that pallet. Honestly, uh, this is this is very tough for the artists. They need to get this tunnel out right away if they actually want to prevent any more generators from being completed. Yeah, I think in this moment, really what they need to do is honestly focus in on fresh hooks. I do not think they're getting the 4K at this point in time and kind of need to deviate from their initial plan which was to get that tunnel out. I think here you got the points you want from the Ada, start getting downs on Ace, on Meg, on, uh, you know, Nia, and so on. And sure enough, there's the down really clutch Dire Crow hit, but there is the fifth generator completed as well. These survivors just playing absolutely out of their minds, and this artist really just struggling to pick up the pieces. Yes, I feel like getting down there uh, during that whole debacle with uh, the Nia and the Ada would have been absolutely crucial for the artist here. Uh, getting a funny down hearing all these, really uh, all, hearing the crows just bouncing back and forth between the survivors. I sure love the severed hands add on. Yeah, however, do want to point out that Ace here, Fresh Hook, I do believe, will be going on the hook for the first time. Looks like it's are trying to get back to the unhook on the Meg as well. But if everyone's still injured, things looking a bit risky here. They're trying to get as many points as possible on the out, but might end up actually giving the artist more points in the long run. Yes, I agree. Uh, in fact, this artist needs to, if they're able to secure themselves, a hook, uh, a kill, I should say, or uh, two, in fact, um, this could actually look good for them. But the Ada getting reset, this is actually very, very good for the survivors. That is amazing. Now that we have a healthy survivor in play, that means it is quite possible all these survivors are going to make it out if they're uh if they can get some uh hit takes in yeah i mean we see though that separate hands coming in clutch once again reapplying the dire crows and getting the swarm there on the ace looks like the artist trying to go for the ace here 
and has in fact cut them off they're going to need the ada to try and body block here they're trying to do so but i imagine the meg on the other exigate as well though does not appear to be the case lights have not uh lit up at all so they also need to worry about egc which is now under a minute uh so these survivors are gonna have to be very careful lest they give uh this artist even more kills than what was initially expected yes and with ace here being the uh with being a fresh uh it is quite possible uh that these survivors might just leave or or they may actually risk it and try to save this ace here but going for the leave very well played from these survivors a very tough match for this artist all around yeah absolutely and with that being said ace has already been hooked once so this will be additional two hooks here for the artist ace will oh, yes. go down just in the nick of time and with that being said that there will be a 1k6 hook for the artist i believe that should be an additional three points so only 14 points for the artist but with those mm -hmm. additional escapes from the survivor that will put them in the lead going into trial number six. Oh wow this was a very 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 tough game for this artist i'm quite curious uh how we have another artist up next correct no, this time it's going to be nope. a spirit, in fact. Divine Dead kind of going Ooh. off the meta with the artist and the plague picks. So we're going to be seeing Eternal's third S tier here with the spirit. We saw their blight. We saw their nurse. Now we're going to be seeing their spirit as well. And as we were mentioning at the top of this match, spirit has been the most lethal killer for this season, even not accounting for the bugs. Uh, so going to be really interesting, to say the least, uh, if uh, Divine Dead can walk away victorious here. But that being said, we are going to be getting this next lobby set up as we speak. But before we do, we do remind everyone here today that we are getting closer and closer to hitting our partner requirements over on YouTube. So if you guys haven't already, please make sure to stop on by, say hi, and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell too if you do want, as we do upload every single VOD every single week. So definitely make sure to do so so you don't miss a single moment of Champs of the Fog as we move into Season 7. With that being said, guys, we'll be back in just a little bit.
All right, and we are back once again, this time for set three, trial number five, Divine Dead versus Eternal. And we are going to be jumping right on in this time on the Wrecker's Yard, where this is for all the marbles. And it's going to come down to this set. If an instance, Divine Dead or Eternal walk away victorious in set number three, they will be going to the finals. Otherwise, they'll be going to the bronze match where they will be going against PTR. That being said, we're jumping right on in. Yes, yes, we are seeing some artist gameplay right on Wrecker's Yard. I am quite excited. I love, I, honestly, all of these killers. I'm excited for all of them. Um, I love me some artist gameplay. Uh, now, with a 3-gen corrupt on the right and top side, uh, as, of t uh, as I would call, um, that's actually pretty good for this artist. All you have to really cover now is about... 30 40 percent of the map um and that's actually really good with her uh birds coming into play and pressuring the generators um how do you feel about this uh about artist on this map honestly it's a it's a potentially really good choice i mean at the end of the day artist has a lot going for them in general um so it's really going to come down to the abilities of the player not necessarily the the killer themselves so it's going to be really interesting to see how they do manage these tiles and if they're able to get full value as we do see these survivors just going for the whole w gameplay um i mean it's really great for killers like huntress for example but the biggest thing about artists is you want to actually restrict survivor line of sight more so than what you want to give yourself and so i think that's where this is going to be very interesting uh, to where artist really wants to keep that survivor guessing through and through. But uh, in this case, we do see Nia going up to the hill. Potentially a bounce landing in play. Will get a little bit of distance for it as well. As we do see Ada coming in for a body block. But it might be in a flight path. And it is that there is the hit on the Ada. Yes. And though uh, Ada is in a great position. Uh, holding up on deep three here, trying to uh, keep the artist busy on this side of the map while their teammates work on those generators. Uh, now that Corrupt is out, that's 120 seconds in uh, for their first down, two generators popping, the Nia is still injured. Uh, this is a very, uh, honestly, this is looking good for the survivors. Yeah, it definitely is. Right now in a really strong position, so we'll have to wait and see if not taking an S tier here plays out in Divine Dead's favor, but at least for this first hook here, things are looking a little bit grim for the artist as we do see a missed skill check there, potentially seeing that Flight of Crows trying to get off in time, but... Uh... Looks like artists just going to be kind of hanging around, harassing gens from afar, and uh, hoping to slow things down long enough to potentially progress Ada to second stage. All right, and we are back for set three, trial number six. The last trial, in fact, where we are going to be seeing Eternal Spirit versus the Vine Dead Survivor Team. And this is for all the marbles. Divine Dead going to be needing to get pretty much all their survivors out of the game in order to claim victory while eternal on the other hand i mean honestly their win condition ain't much they need to get a 2k here in order to win so that being said eternal spirit out on the prowl looking for survivors and so far will find one off in the distance and i imagine they'll be phase walking right on over 
podcast, this is going to look to be a very, 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 very tough match for the survivors. Uh, with Ner sorry, Spirit on Wrecker's Yard, it's an incredibly good map for Spirit uh, because of her mobility. Uh, and a lot of the times with the RNG, we'll have very difficult, you can have difficult chases uh, if the RNG is not on your side, but it does seem like there's a decent balance uh, towards the left side of the map, so if the spirit, uh, if the sorry, if the survivors are able to extend these chases, possibly uh, get out of the uh, spirit's hair just enough, it is quite possible uh, they could turn this around, but uh, that's a tall order against the spirit, for sure. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. We see Lori throwing Pala after Pala trying to get away from the Spirit. However, Spirit hot on their trail with the phase walk. We hear the Lori still here. There's the vault and the down. And what looks to be a miss skill check over on a generator, regressing it by 10%. And looks like Lori will be going down into the basement at this point in time. And, oh, wow. So this is a very crucial hook for the Spirit. It's going to be a tough order for the survivors to have to go in for the save. This is already looking a little rough for the survivors, especially if they have to go ahead and uh, take out like extra hook states uh, out of the um, uh, out the exit gates. So, um, but if the survivors are able to get enough pressure, uh, it is definitely possible. Um, just mm, it's looking very very rough for them. Yeah, with that being said, Survivor's not going down without a fight. We see the first gen popping off in the distance, though Nia does get hit away from theirs, as we will see Spirit hit the gen with a call of Brine. And looks like we do see the unhook there in the basement as well, as Spirit will go for another phase walk and potentially a tunnel out here, though. No scratch marks, which means that they're still yeah they're still in the basement potentially trying to get a heal ace with the body block for the lori lori actually fully healthy as well so a risky play to say the least to heal in the basement but it seemed to have worked out i wonder if it's quite possible that they have will make it and botany combo that six second heal can come a long way especially against an s tier like the spirit and if that's the kind of play that they went for that is definitely what the survivors needed to come around from a basement hook and honestly it seems like they are definitely capitalizing on it uh but finding the injured nia here uh this knee is gonna have to extend the chase just a little bit longer enough and coming down here right near the generator with a lot of progress this is actually going to look a little rough for them here um just making trade after trade it seems yeah and on top of which we do see another screw choke pain resonance there on that same gen nia probably was on that gen let go of it just in the nick of time to go back on trying to get that gen completed but just not able to do it with that 15 percent regression from screw choke pain resonance speaking of you know we we hear about uh, some of these new perk changes coming down the pipe and the potential for them. I imagine uh, Scourge Hook will be on the chopping block, so I'm really curious to see how much longer Scourge Hook here becomes a staple of the comp meta. But for now, it is here to stay, and it is doing work this match, as Lori does get found once again by the Spirit, with some very keen ears, to say the least, as they must have heard the breathing of the Lori. Very much so. These spirit players are crazy with their sound, like with their um, hearing. Uh, playing with so many top spirits, they just hear like you so much as sifting your toe on the floor. It is absolutely crazy. But getting it down here on the lorry, kicking that generator once again to uh, apply Call of Brine and getting that extra little 2.5% applied to it. Uh, now, I'm quite curious uh, if the survivors really want to come on top in this situation with already four stages in this. What do you think that they're uh, what what's possibly in store for us? It's hard to say, honestly. I mean, they have three gens remaining. We see them trying to crank out these gens as fast as possible to get as many stages out of the Exegate as they can. But right now, this being the third fresh hook, that's already nine points. Nia now going down is going to be an additional two. That's 11 points. The Spirit just needs to cross around the 15-point threshold, and they claim victory. So, going to be a really difficult thing here for survivors. They can only give up either two second hooks or one, basically two more hooks, period. Two more hooks, they can only give up, and then that is that. And with Scourge Hook Pain Resonance doing so much work here, 
I mean, uh, there there is a reason when we looked at Spirit's data from this season, uh, I do believe Skirchuk is going to be getting the axe from for Spirit next season. Yes, uh, Spirit is definitely getting a whole lot of work uh, out of these uh, regression perks. I agree. And now, the survivors, there are four survivors still in play here. And there are three generators left. The split seems to be pretty okay, in my opinion. Uh, catching the lorry, though, and getting that uh, that last hook, if anything. Sorry, second last hook that the spirit needs to secure this. This is looking really, really tough on the survivors. And now with a 3v1, it's going to be even harder. Oh, gosh. Um, but we've seen comebacks better like much bigger than this so if anything if they're able to pull this off that will be amazing yeah it's definitely not set the wrong possibility ace now in chase keep in mind that they have been hooked once already and at this point in time i do believe that eternal is at 14 points ace will be an additional two that will be 16 points which will get them above that 15 point threshold so at this point in time i do believe that eternal has claimed victory in set number three meaning that they will go over to finals up against team singularity Yes, that is correct. These these teams have been playing out of their minds. Eternal winning these sets, going right up until set three. I have been enjoying these games oh so much. Uh, now, to focus back onto the game, it seems as though they're trying to fake out going for the Ada instead of going for the Nia here. Uh, Nia forcing... Uh, being forced to lead away from the hook at this very moment but because of the situation that we have right now with the 3v1 the ada can't really commit to this unhook it seems as though the ace is possibly going to die on the hook here unless the neo can pull something off this very last second yeah just about 10 seconds left until they are dead on hook but nia coming in last moment and spare with another phase walk will get the down on the knee i believe ace on the other side of the wall as well meaning that it's going to be a two-man slug here and ace with the last one left in this trial upright spirit going for a little bit of a, a fake phase walk here a little bit of mind gaming and looks like ace will be going to pretty much a dead zone here Though Spirit potentially getting a little bit faked out as Ace does hug the edge of the map, but will not be for long as Ace will go down in the traditional comp corner. Yes, and it is... Even with lead outs, it seems as though, well, DS in the corner of the map with no resources to take advantage of, I feel like the Ace is just extending it just a little bit longer uh funny uh ds play but yes uh even with bleed outs here it seems as though the uh spirit definitely has secured this this was a very tough order on the survivors uh so uh honestly um i do love me some spirit gameplay uh i'm this has been absolutely insane <laughs> yeah no i 1000 percent agree and now spirit out on the prowl for the final two survivors left down on the ground and looks like at the end of the day, based on the score, regardless of the bleed outs, it will not matter. And uh, Spirit does find both the Nia and the Ada here. Going for the pick on the Nia. And honestly, not a lot of hooks in the nearby area. So they will have to drag them out and uh, probably re-down them after the pickup. Oh, and they're barely going to make it by half a second. But the Spirit letting them go interesting play uh chances are the survivors are just going to extend it a little bit longer but because they got the down before they could even make into the corner uh it is very wait i'm confused by this play what is going on here guild <laughs> i i'm not sure if maybe the spirits thinking that they might have deliverance or some other form of second chance perk here and that is the reasoning. And so now they're gonna go for the further hook to try and make sure that they're able to get both. Ada just barely able to get off their shoulder in time before the spirit hooks there. And looks like Ada gonna be making a mad dash back though. Scratch Mark's kind of fallen off there. Ada potentially mind game and spirit here and doing so successfully. Spirit 
not able to identify where they went and definitely not in the locker either. Yes, this Ada doing very well to avoid the spirit. I love Ada for that, if anything. She is actually incredibly quiet if you're crouching. Uh, you can actually juke some spirits even when they're up close uh, within phase uh, if you play it right uh, as Ada. But uh, losing Ada here is actually incredibly uh, like i'm just honestly impressed by that play uh going for the hook on nia now is ada gonna try to go for a hatch play here hmm. i mean it's definitely a possibility spirit no longer having to worry about that far hook and they're right next to the shack however and the hatch to boot so honestly unless there is uh, a sh i would say a sneaky hatch play or just being on top of the exit gates I think Ada will end up dying to EGC nonetheless. Spirit taking a, a quick look around, seeing if maybe Ada will make an appearance before closing the uh, hatch. And the exit gate's now powered. Spirit has a hill to just kind of sit on top of, look at both exit gates, and sure enough, there is one red light already as Ada tries to open it up. But uh, Spirit finding the Ada nonetheless. And honestly, really well done by Spirit. Ada is just very quiet. I did not even hear them there. So really keen ears there from the Spirit, to say the least. Yes, this, uh, that was very sneaky uh, of the Ada, uh, making it all the way to three, too. Um, th this is a lot of open space here. Um, and But wasn't enough to get away from the uh, Spirit uh, or to get that escape. But um, yes. Uh, very keen ears on spirit players. These games have been a... Uh, how do I put it, Guilt? Without uh, repeating myself. They've been <laughs> absolutely wonderful to watch at such a high level. Uh, it just... I, it just gets my brain going. And uh, it's been so exciting, so entertaining. Um, thank you for having me. <laughs> hey, anytime, and thank you for joining me here today as well. With that being said, that there is, in fact, going to wrap up the matches for semifinals. We are going to have PTR and Divine Dead at 12 p.m. CST tomorrow for the bronze match, followed by... Eternal and Team SNG in the finals at 2 p.m. CST. So definitely get excited for that. I know I am. Hopefully all are too. And tomorrow, I do believe we have a few people joining us. I believe at this moment in time, we got Jukebox joining me for the bronze match at 12, followed by Direwolf at 2 p.m. CST for the finals. So get excited for all of that. Hopefully all are too. And with that being said, we are going to wrap things up. Thank you all for joining us today. And as always, you, yes, you, the viewers, are our sponsors. So the ads that you watch, all the bits that I tip, all the subs they buy, and of course, all the rogue energy you buy using a code COTF goes a point, Champs of Fog, and the prize pool for Group A and Group B. That being said, we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye! <laughs>